Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me in this video. I appreciate each and every one of you. In this video, we're taking a look at the Alaska-class OMA ship. If you're not familiar with the Alaska-class, you can refer to this infographic that I've actually made for all the OMA vessels, starting with the largest and making our way down this side and down this side as well here to the smallest one. Now this will grow as I develop more ships, but the Alaska class is the one we're gonna focus in this video, and it's pretty much a high speed diving yacht. Now it does have other purposes and other functions. It has three variants of ships that are part of the Alaska class. It has the Alaska herself, it has the RSV Anvik, and lastly it has the RSV Akiak. Now all three of these ships share the exact same sort of chassis, but the difference that you'll notice between them is actually in the function. Where the Alaska is super smooth and low profile, the other ones did get a helicopter on the roof. Now that helicopter did also come with a rear sliding crane or gantry crane, whereas the Alaska has just a boom crane. The Alaska is meant for simple diving exploration missions, because it just has these two sort of underwater sea scooters, whereas these other two come with either a submarine or a rib. Now the rib is on this ship because this, the Akiak, is meant for search and rescue missions. It also has a sea scooter for underwater search and rescue missions, whereas the Anvik just has a nice little mini sub on the back. The reason they are research yachts is because they have hot tubs, they have loungers, and otherwise yacht-like amenities, whereas the other OMA vessels have more of an industrial or sort of a research-based, like a laboratory-based feel. These have sofas and these have like luxury finishes and stuff, hardwood floor throughout. But of course, it still is a research ship, so you have a research area, but the kind of the chassis or the frame or the platform that this ship uses is actually a yacht. So it is a little different than the other ships that are purely research function ships. Now if you're like me, you probably get pressured to sort of make new builds and <laughs> I'm also running a bunch of other stuff here, including a Discord server that I'm trying to take a less of a hands-on approach and that's thanks to my amazing moderators and moderation team that I have there. But in addition to my YouTube videos and builds and real life and job and house and car and everything, it is sometimes overwhelming. So sometimes in doing all of these tasks that I do, it is nice to sort of take a step back and even look at some of my previous creations. And while I do love building new ships and creations, it is sometimes nice to take a step back and fix what is broken. Now this ship, the Alaska and then the sister ships, were released in December of 2021, so a while back here, and while they did stand the test of time, meaning that the sort of interior hasn't changed that much, I've been using more or less the same advanced systems that I have there, I have also made some changes to some microcontrollers since this time, and of course we all know that since this time, the game has also made changes, including the compressed gases update and some of this other stuff that we've had coming in recently. Which brings us to the ship. And by the ship, I mean all three of them. But by the ship, what I did is made the required changes to bring this ship into 2024. So of course, now not only do you have a pump that can fill the diving gear, that's obviously a must, now that this is supposed to be a diving ship, if you can't fill your diving gear, you're in a bit of a trouble here. So I've added that, and if we make our way to the roof, I've given the ship four little sort of air intake or HVAC systems. So inside the ship, you're now going to have air circulating, so you will not be suffocating anytime soon, hopefully, inside the ship. And if we make our way down the stairs, you see there is an assortment of these sort of vent holes with ventilation or HVAC in the rooms. So now the rooms are fully um, brought up to the update. 
and can function properly without you sort of running out of oxygen. Now, I did not fix every area with ventilation, so if you go into the engine room here, I didn't actually add a um, HVAC in here, because not only do we, need to, do we not need to lose heat to this room, I can't imagine anyone spending prolonged periods of time in this sort of like, you know, crouching in here. So this part here, or if they do, they could leave the door open. So I did not fix every bit, but I've added a lot of little changes like that. And then some of the microcontroller changes. So I did take so, take a look at what microcontroller, microcontrollers I'm running in this ship. And I actually updated some of them. So you may find some new technology here. And all this working on these different things, one after another, led me to this. The amazing seafloor scanning tool by White U. He made this tool custom for me. And honestly, I'm going to start throwing it in all my ships. I love how this tool works. And it makes something so, so good. Especially for ships that are intended to be like underwater exploration or diving ships. You can see here that we are right over top of the shipwreck. You could even see the kind of um, cargo bay here right down there and it seems that something is inside it so just be aware when you're turning this on you have to have your helm roof displays on before you could turn this button and use the system but that was one of the things i did and in addition to that i've gone ahead and made some of the spotlights aiming i made some of the cameras aiming I made these roof spotlights aiming outwards as well because they were kind of annoying. They would shine right right down on the bow here. So I went ahead and made these facing outwards actually. So little bits of things here and there. Things that most of you may not really appreciate but regardless I did want to bring them to your attention. And these ships are currently out with the update that I've made. Now I'm really bad for this because I have so many creations. And I really cannot make myself start editing all of them. But on occasion, I get motivated and kind of like inspired to fix what was once working properly and now is broken. And that, in this case, ended up being this rib. Now, this rib has just kind of been sitting on the back of the ship. But it's a platform that I've been using on a lot of my ships. You'll find the same rib on the Avala class and on a lot of my other ships. It's just a really nice rib that I made kind of quite useful. But before I get into that, I want to show you this. This is how it actually looked. So some things I build and I built them like three years ago and they're good enough. This is by all accounts, in my opinion, a good enough rib. Maybe not the best rib, but certainly seems to do the trick, especially if you're just trying to kind of get from a bigger ship to the to the shore so you could use it almost like a launch to get yourself from one place to another however this rib had a fatal flaw well it has a great speed we're doing 60 knots but eventually it starts to kind of clap like smack into the water and within a few seconds here it does a massive flip and it pretty much becomes unusable now what I did is I chalked that up to user error and it is because really the pilot or the driver of the rib should himself or herself decide that this ship is you know unstable for the conditions and should probably slow down. But it was a little on the um, naive side for me to expect that I guess because the ship this boat pretty much cannot go in a straight line without it starting to smack into the ground and soon enough it does a flip. So I spent most of yesterday pretty much revamping this little rib and while that may seem like a fruitless task I think the results are well worth it. Um, I did a full sweep and redo of the whole thing starting with the controls so the rib company that i've manufactured here this um ab marine they're a fake company or a fictional company but they're now on their 
2024 lineup of ribs and they're dropping some of the things that the previous ribs had in favor of a much more advanced system so first thing you'll notice when you hop aboard this rib is there is a nice big display here and i know i showed you this earlier but i'm going to show you it again it has this control panel where everything is available to you and it has even a little throttle le le gauge or whatever and compass down here so as you're turning you could have know which direction you're going in so this thing is all inclusive kind of your main control panel for your little rib here but i wanted to take it the next to the next level so in addition to that many of you may not know this but this rib can actually break so if we pick up some speed here and we're going now i'm going to start holding s i'm holding s i'm holding s and i'm still holding s you can see the propellers actually break the ship and they start to reverse just a little bit because I, I kept i kept holding s so if you hold s it'll come to a much faster stop than if you don't hold s so fun fact number one second i went ahead and added a radar now it's not a long range radar but it's a pretty good radar considering the fact that it's on a little rib and it has not only a radar function but it has a transponder locator function so you get both now and this beautiful wide display of a map that can tell you where this is now this creation is not mine i did edit it a little bit but you can find it in the link for this ship or this boat when it comes out so this map is not mine but it is a fantastic system and I just love this small radar. There's really no need for the big radar for such a small vessel such as this. But this kind of radar and map system works perfectly. So as before, you do have your high gear that you kind of need to use if you want to get up to high speeds. And this time, it doesn't really get up to 55 knots. I kind of limit it out at around 40, 43, 45-ish. So it will climb to 45 knots or so, but then it just, the intention is it remains stable and you can actually use this even for long range rescues. You don't just have to use it for sort of offshore excursions. I wanted to make it quite useful for all kinds of deployment. Speaking of deployment, it comes now with multiple attachments and ways to link up to a mothership. It does contain the standard three electrical connector sort of connection. So this is the most standard deck based connection. You just place it on these three electricals. However, I do have the track here now as well as the side connectors here, whatever these guys are called, the hard point. So this is good for just hanging off the back of a ship or on the deck. So you have many different systems you can now utilize for attaching this to a ship. Of course, on the top, we have multiple anchors, rope anchors for winching this thing. Unfortunately, the center of mass is kind of where the seat is. So I think if you wanted to lift it with a crane, you'd need to connect it to two points. And there are multiple locations in the front and rear that you could attach. So it gives you a couple of places where you could kind of pull this thing up if you need and attach it and mount it to ships the akimbo is a good example you could see here this one uses the hard point connector to attach it to the ship on the rear right there on the rsv akiak the thing that started this whole sort of rib transformation you have the rib and it will be updated to the one with the radar but pretty much you have two connectors to release from the sliding track which you don't want to release from but the connectors you do and as soon as you do that you can actually go ahead and push this whole boat into the water because it was on these tracks. So that actually ends up being a nice system for fast deployment. And of course, then you hop on and use it as you see fit. Another thing we fixed is the reverse. This version, you can see what happens there. It starts to go right into the water because these, this fin propeller wasn't actually set to function properly. Whereas the new version with the um, radar, when we turn on the reverse, you can actually reverse to your heart's desire and the uh, microcontrollers automatically balance the ship. 
They also reduce throttle. You can't really go faster than this. This is 100% throttle in reverse. You're getting around eight knots you see here, but this is good enough for what we're trying to do. And you can see the electric is kind of struggling as well because it seems we're using some of the battery uh, sort of booster, but this is a much more controllable speed to reverse in. And of course the braking thing works here too. If I'm holding S right now and it actually stopped it much faster than if I was not holding S. But of course the, throttles, the throttle is sticky, so I'm not actually pressing W right now. It just kind of stays that way. But remember, you do want to put it into high gear to get the full top speed out of this little rib. So that is pretty much it. This rib, again, a little thing, but I'm super proud of it. I jam packed it with electronics. I kind of rebuilt it, not fully from the ground up, because I did like the original shape, but what I did do is optimize that rear area to look a little nicer. It doesn't look just like a box, it looks a little bit more on the uh, aerodynamic side, I think, where the engine is. Of course, adding the radar to all of, all, all of the um, models, it's no, no longer sort of restricted, I guess, and without radar, now they all have radar, whether it's the uh, 9, the 10, the 11, 12, whatever the classes I may make in the future, they all will have a radar if they have this sort of display. So most likely this will be the smallest variant. I don't really see much purpose making much of a smaller one. We do have the um, AB Marine sort of sea bike or sea do or whatever. So that is a bit of a different platform. This is a rib platform, so this is intended to be kind of a multi-passenger deployable rib. And depending on what I kind of feel I want to do here, I may update the lineup with these other ribs. So the middle one is the one we're looking at, and that's kind of the yacht rib, or the one that has the nice seat, more sporty. That's the Z edition, as you can see here. Now, I may make a Y edition that is the same size, but it has a standing sort of helm. And this is a bit more industrial looking rather than sporty looking. It will have the radar as well. And then we'll see, this is kind of an optional still, an idea with me, but I may make an L version, which is an extended variant of whatever rib I decide to do. So it will use the same basic connectors and it'll have the same um, helm setup, but it'll have much more seats. So maybe even up here. So it's like much more intended for some search and rescue missions that you may be doing and that type of thing. So we'll see how that all comes to fruition if we decide to to go that route but for now um the middle one is what we're going to be releasing and any rib that i make may make in the future or update from my past collection it'll follow the same probably numbering sequence and the same sort of option slash um control panel layout so there's this to look forward to, and again, maybe they're not really something that is going to get a lot of attention, but I'm super proud of them just because of the size and the fact that I sort of shoved this many microcontrollers in it. Like, yeah, there's still some space, but I also didn't want to just make it all microcontrollers. I wanted to make the thing function somewhat properly as well, and that was kind of my intention. So think this will be a nice addition, at least maybe not as its own standalone creation, but as a supplementary creation to larger vessels. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully also you're looking forward to these changes and that you're going to enjoy the new ships. It's not as rewarding fixing up an old ship than making a new one, especially because it doesn't end up getting as many downloads. People may not know that it's even fixed. So it's a little less sort of self-satisfactory. But at the same time, these are beautiful ships that I just don't want to have them go to waste. So having the proper updates were a major important thing. Starting with the water jet, to be honest. They didn't even work properly after the compressed gas update. So now you'll find that they can actually f work functionally and hopefully very adequate for any of your search and rescue or underwater exploration needs. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more content, for more creations. And as always, happy stormworksing, everyone.